Well, hello. I'm Eliza Jones, and I love Fridays. Friday is the last day of the work week for many of us, and it ushers in the weekend when we steal a couple of days of freedom before returning to work on the dreaded Monday. It's also the day that my podcast drops. Why is Friday the 13th supposed to be an unlucky day? Why Friday? Why the 13th? I desperately wanted to know the answers to these questions, and the best excuse I had for delving into them was writing a podcast episode. Welcome to the wooden dream of it, Friday the 13th special. Until I started researching for this episode, I didn't realize that Fridays in general are considered terribly unlucky by many people in the United States and parts of Europe. This superstition is so strong that on September 7th, 1900, a group of 10 women who were living in squalor were scheduled to move into homes built especially for them, but they refused to move. Even under the threat of arrest, the women couldn't be persuaded. Eventually, it was discovered that it was the worst of luck to move on Friday in their Highland superstition. The very next day, the women happily moved into their new homes. Generations ago, thunderstorms were met with great anxiety by humans, and the day of the week on which thunderstorms occurred was especially important. A thunderstorm on Friday meant the murder of someone of importance. Sounds like a good excuse for committing a murder to me. Um, Your Honor, the thunderstorm on Friday made me shoot the sheriff. Unfortunately, if the sheriff shooter appeared in court before the judge on a Friday, no excuse could prevent their bad luck from presiding over their case. There are many, many things that, when done on a Friday, supposedly bring bad luck. To name a few, cutting your nails, starting a new job, and removing ashes from a stove. Unless you want to develop insomnia, you should never turn your mattress on a Friday. You know all those Friday nights when people go on dates hoping to find that special person who will make their life complete? Or who will at least make their weekend complete? Yeah, well, it's bad luck to go on a date on a Friday. It's even bad luck to get married on a Friday. Worst of all, though, it is unlucky to be born on a Friday. You can't even control that. I had always figured that my bad luck came from being born on a Monday, but at least I wasn't born on a Friday. Why is Friday considered bad luck, though? It's a great day, right? Well, for the Christians in the audience, you may be thinking that Fridays are bad luck because the crucifixion occurred on a Friday. But that was a particular Friday, now known as Good Friday. Annually, Good Friday occurs on the Friday before the first Sunday on or after the first full moon after the vernal equinox. Why isn't this single Friday considered unfortunate? Don't get me wrong. I mean, Good Friday has its own superstitions that don't apply to other Fridays. For instance, planting crops on Good Friday guarantees that the crops will fail. And eggs laid on a Good Friday won't keep. Better put those eggs in the skillet right away. To find the true source of Friday's ill reputation, we have to go much further back in history to when the Scandinavian, Roman, and Greek gods were revered. The sixth day of the week was named for Frigga, who was the ancient Scandinavian goddess of fertility and love, and the equivalent of the Roman goddess Venus. I couldn't find a single reason why Frigga would forbid so many events, from everyday actions like cutting your nails, to joyous events such as weddings and births on her day. All I can say is, Frigga must have taken her Fridays way, way too seriously. Fridays can be fortunate sometimes. Rain on a Friday will bring lovely weather on Saturday. Before you tell someone on Saturday of a dream you had on a Friday night, though, make sure it was a good dream, because telling it may make it come true. This is why I wouldn't dream of it drops on Friday. I don't want my crazy dreams coming true because I told my listeners about them on Saturday. You may be thinking, okay, Eliza, we get it. Fridays are unlucky. Why the number 13? I'm glad you asked. Let's travel back to the days of Norse mythology to find 12 gods having a dinner party in Valhalla. Loki, the mischievous shapeshifter, decided to crash the party and become the 13th guest. 
At some point during the party, he convinced the blind god of darkness, Hoder, to fire a mistletoe-tipped arrow at Baldur the Beautiful, the god of gladness and joy, and the arrow proved fatal to Baldur. There are many other stories of ill-fated dinner gatherings where there were 13 guests and one of them died soon after. Perhaps the most famous of these was the Last Supper of Christ with his disciples, but there are less famous ones, such as the one that occurred in 1898 at the Savoy Hotel in London. This dinner party was intended to include 14 at the table, but one canceled, leaving a party of 13. The South African diamond magnate hosting the party was not superstitious, and he decided to go ahead with 13 at the table. One of the guests at the party, who was superstitious, mentioned that the first person to leave the table could die soon after. Weeks later, the diamond magnate, who was the first to leave the table at the Savoy, was shot dead by a blackmailer. And since then, the Savoy Hotel has added a sculpted cat named Caspar to any party of 13. In some places, the superstition is that the last person to leave the table will die and in others, it is thought that one of the guests of the party of 13 will die. Whichever person is doomed by the party of 13, Caspar will prevent their death by being the 14th guest at their dinner party at the Savoy. <coughs> the United States is absolutely rife with the number 13. The Great Seal of the USA has 13 stars, arrows, berries, stripes, and leaves, representing the 13 colonies from which the United States was founded. The U.S. flag has 13 stripes, also representing the colonies. The U.S. $1 bill has 13 stars, arrows, stripes, olives, leaves, and steps on the pyramid atop which sits the all-seeing eye, and that is just on the front. Is it any wonder that people experience a severe, irrational fear of the number 13? Those folks are said to be suffering from triskaidekaphobia. Yes, I have that spelled out phonetically in my notes. How did you guess? <laughs> Numerologists tell us that 12 is a complete number. There are 12 months in a year, 12 signs of the zodiac, 12 gods of Olympus, 12 labors of Hercules, 12 tribes of Israel, and 12 apostles of Christ. In ancient Rome, even the witches gathered in circles of 12. Should a 13th try to join, that witch was believed to be the devil. <laughs> Maybe the problem isn't with 13 itself. Maybe it's because it messes with the completeness of 12. The convergence of the unfortunate Friday and the unlucky 13 happens at least once each year. In years where January 1st is a Sunday, there will be three Friday the 13th. For those suffering from Fregatriskidecophobia, an intense unreasonable fear of Friday the 13th, this day may be spent in bed to avoid potential misfortune. Others choose to get out of bed but wreak havoc with their superstitions. <coughs> One such example occurred on Friday, November 13, 1931. The Atlantic liner Aquitania was set to embark on a journey from New York to England, but such a large number of passengers protested against setting sail on Friday the 13th that the ship remained in port until 12.01 a.m. on Saturday. I have to ask, why did so many people with Fregatriskaitegaphobia book a voyage on Friday the 13th anyway? <laughs> many buildings don't have 13th floors, even if they are more than 12 stories tall. Houses are rarely numbered 13, and many hotels don't have rooms numbered 13. It's all just superstition, though, right? In 1970, NASA decided to take on the superstition of 13 being unlucky by launching a 13th Apollo mission from Launch Pad 39, which of course is 13 times 3, at 1313 Central Standard Time. That's 1.13 p.m. for you civvies possibly thinking they were tempting fate enough with all of the planned 13s, they opted to hold the launch on Saturday, April 11th. Things didn't go quite as planned, though. On Monday, April 13th, an oxygen tank exploded, forcing the mission to abort. That's pretty scary, and kind of good evidence that 13 is unlucky. Finn Air more successfully took on the power of Friday the 13th not once, but 21 times. 
Finnair's flight number 666 departed on every Friday the 13th from 2006 to 2017. The flight was to Helsinki Airport, which has the airport code HELL. <laughs> For those of you in the back, that's flight 666 to HELL on Friday the 13th. How many crashes occurred during these 21 seemingly doomed by superstition flights? Zero. What was the cause of the end of flight number 666? Hmm, European Airlines. They decided they needed more flight numbers, so they changed the way flights are numbered. Finnair will continue to fly to and from hell, whether it's Friday the 13th or any other day of the year. Maybe luck is what you make it. If you're superstitious and you get married on a Friday and have 13 attendants, maybe you'll agonize over the potential bad luck so much that you'll actually cause it. If you let yourself believe that Friday the 13th is a lucky day for you, maybe it will be. Whatever your thoughts are about Friday the 13th, take this piece of advice from me. Don't try to reopen an abandoned summer camp on Friday the 13th. Creating this content for you is a dream come true for me, so your support means more than you know. Please tell your family, friends, and coworkers about Wooden Dream of It. Give the show a five-star rating on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. This helps us reach more people who will enjoy and maybe even benefit from this podcast. Wooden Dream of It is created, written, and produced by me, Eliza Jones. Marketing assistance provided by Lapis Hale and Leah Wade. Original song, Dreams and Nightmares by Twisted. That's Twisted with a Y. Find them on Facebook as Twisted Twisted, both with a Y instead of an I. Connect with us on social media at Wooden Dream of It. That's Wooden without the apostrophe. Be sure to check my show notes for a complete list of the references used to make this podcast. Thanks for listening. I'll talk to you next week.